And welcome back to the latest episode of the Writers Podcast. Today with me, I have not one, but I have two writers. So I'm going to be doing double duty talking to two people, and that would be Rox Berkey and Charles Brakefield. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. And both of you are situated, is it Texas? That's correct. We are, yes. Yes, I'm so assuming you have, you're not in the panhandle. No, I'm in Austin, actually. No. Okay, yeah. very good. And I'm in Dallas. So, all right. Okay. Very good. So we're here to talk about your latest book, which is uh, Enigma Tracer. Is that correct? Yep. That's great. And, and that's part of the um, Enigma series. Uh, this is what book 13? Uh, this is actually book one of oh. the new series. Oh, Enigma okay. Airs. Oh, I see. Okay. So the, the you have a couple of other series. Um, I'm looking at your website as well. How, how many of those are there? There are 12 in the Enigma series. Okay. And we decided that we didn't want to do a book 13, so we decided to go <laughs> down and start a new series. That's the truth. Okay, so you're both tech, tech people, though, right? Oh, yes. yeah. Tech, and yet you have the fear of number 13. <laughs> hey, you know, you don't you don't push a good thing. Yeah, that's right. Well, we, we're also afraid of the year two thousand. We're we're afraid of uh, you know uh, you know the uh, software upgrades of the the end. But, and 13, that one I can uh, understand. <laughs> yeah. So I get you. All right. So uh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, I don't know who wants to take the lead, but um, I'm always curious about who how how you came to be writers, um, and I don't know. Uh, Rox, do you want to go first? How, how did that come about for you? And then, and, and then, Charles, you can jump in as uh, how you two met and teamed up. We actually ended up working at a technology company together. Okay. And our our initial writing um, really was born of trying to write tech manuals and documentation and right. deliver workshops and those kinds of things. And you know, writing any technical documentation. Um, it's like watching paint dry. It's very dry. It's very yes. boring. Yep. I'm and quite so we decided yep. <laughs> we wanted to play a little bit and and kind of take the technology that was that we like and that we are you know passionate about overall, but mm -hmm. then weave it into a story, and and help others understand that technology can go to the wrong side. It's not always okay. going to be helpful. Cool. Now, and uh, the same for you, Charles. Is that? Uh... Um, well, yeah, we had we'd gotten a couple of uh, uh, tech manuals published. Uh, our mm -hmm. company had said, "Hey, you can write here. Uh, here you do some more of this, and as soon as you get it done, it's out of date." And so, very frustrating. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, I, I stomped off and uh, gathered up all my marbles and said, uh, "I don't want to play this anymore." Okay. And uh, a couple months later, uh, Rocks, being the astute. Uh, genius that she is said mm -hmm. uh you know what if just what if what if we went technical fiction i said mm. excuse me <laughs> what, what exactly would that be right. well we use the uh, uh the real technical junk that we work on well we have to fix uh, uh we have troubleshoot and uh we see uh go sideways all the time and um we just use some fictional characters we got plenty of people we don't like and so uh we can whack them no oh. Okay. I was sold. I mean, I just that, like just that quick. Oh, you know. <laughs> and any uh, similarities to uh, bosses and workmates is uh, totally coincidental. I take it. Um, no, <laughs> they're actually intentional. Uh, you know. <laughs> okay. Very good. Now, uh, I'm curious for both of you, and uh, we'll flip it, Charles. You go first this time. Were you a, a, a a voracious reader or a reader at all of like fiction and whatnot and had you take any writing course uh, creative writing courses um you know part of the uh, you know being a, an air force brat is you grow mm -hmm. up on bases okay uh, that don't have tv all right didn't have tv we lived in germany for three years in a place that was you know we had radio mm -hmm. and, and we just read books like crazy people um anything that was uh, was fun and uh you know the, the fiction you know, seem to be, uh, you know, the Hardy Boys, uh, you know, oh, comic yes. books, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, I, I kind of, uh, you know, 
moved into uh, high school in, on. Right. And then uh, from there, uh, it was a, uh, uh, when I got into college, I thought, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not comfortable with my writing skills. And so I pushed mm. myself to be able to take uh, some uh, aggressive uh, writing classes to be able to learn how to write basically. Mm. And that was a, it was a good, uh, it was a good effort. Um, and it's uh, not something that, that I'm finished with. I'll, I'll be honest. I, you know, I, I sure. need, I need more, more effort. Uh, if you don't think so, uh, ask rocks. Um, you know, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but uh, you know, you, you've got, you got to practice. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what my dad taught me. He said, you know, you know, uh, the only person you compete against is yourself. Right. Do better right. than what you did yesterday. And, um, and, continue that mantra going forward okay uh, how about you Rox? any writing uh, courses reading, uh, reading writing yes i certainly took some writing courses in 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 high school and college and and enjoyed it a lot um mm -hmm. the creative side was really fun but definitely a voracious reader and all kinds of genres um there's okay. only a couple of genres that i i really stay away from um uh, i i'm not i'm not a horror fan Oh, okay. You know, it gives me nightmares. Oh, no Stephen so, King? <laughs> um, I've actually done a couple of Stephen King, and I had nightmares, okay. and so that kind of cut cut that oh, right okay. out of my, um, <laughs> right out there. Right. Um, so, but yes, I absolutely adore reading, and I actually do a lot of book reviews on a, okay. a blog very site. Cool. So. Oh, yeah. Okay, very cool. Uh, given the, the, the nature of the fiction that you're writing, are, are you like big um, Michael Crichton? fans or techno thriller writer fans or um, we oh. do like michael Crichton, or at least i yeah. do um yeah it, it, he pairs it, up nicely with our, our material as well yeah so mm -hmm. you know really we, does. um when, when people say well so what's your stuff like you know we have we have a, a, a list a laundry list of people that uh authors we admire the work mm -hmm. that they do um, and uh, we like to say well this one is uh, is, uh, is a good parallel to uh, this uh, this stream um Kevin J. Anderson, one of the, one of my favorites, and okay. you know, Rox is a, a, is a big fan of Tolkien. So, uh, you know, you'll get a lot okay. of the, uh, uh, the science fact, the futuristic flavoring mm -hmm. our, in our books, and some of the fantasy that's uh, that's underlying uh, in a, a lot of our stories. Okay, so as a writing duo, uh, how do you approach a novel, and what? do you think of each other what, what are your strengths and how, and how do you bring that to, to each book that you write so believe it or not we actually approach writing the same way we approach work so we exchange things on spreadsheets and electronically <laughs> okay and so, so we track everything from characters to plot lines to threads of stories on spreadsheets we use color coding to make that happen and and we electronically exchange it with one another um and and honestly um you know we we talk mm -hmm. to kind of get the flavor of what we want a story to do what's the threat of the story okay. and then who are the who are the main players of that and charles always has a really fun way of of saying cuz uh, his wife is actually our first editor he has a, mm. he has a really nice way of 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 saying that we actually are, are on the right track with our book so go ahead charles we'll shoot that <laughs> yeah. over to you well and then uh, you know part of our, our writing technique to be honest lou is that though we have a uh, patent pending technique called literary ping pong um where okay. we take <laughs> and bat the story back and forth mm -hmm. and this goes, does a couple of things it, it uh, helps us keep uh uh, the other one on on and ourselves on track, you know, mm -hmm. look like a you know I, I I may have strayed a little bit. What do you think about this, rocks And the rocks will say, you know, uh, I've got some ideas. Let me put this in, and I go, wow, I never would have thought of that. Mm. And so, okay. that that polishing technique for the characters and the story is important, so that when we get finished, you can't tell who wrote what. It's right. important for the reader to say, ah, I, I, it's a nice, satisfying, single sounding voice mm -hmm. that uh, that's delivering the, the book. And that's uh, uh, that sets key for uh, the uh, the product that we want to turn out. OK. And do even with all that um, meticulous planning, there's still a, uh, an organic aspect to it, uh, like the, the creativity side of the writing um, do 
you find that one of you has a better strength at say maybe plot and the other at character or, or things of that nature? How does that, uh, or you feel that you're both equal at that? So I think I think Charles has a really good vision on plot. Mm. Um, some of the some of the um, uh, the more subtle shifts to get to that end game in the plot, mm -hmm. I probably add a little bit more flavor on that side. That's kind of where I I can use my my you know I'm a, a customer experience technologist, so I can mm -hmm. use that side of it and and bring that a little a little richer. Okay. Yeah, but my, my problem is that, you know, some of the details are, are uh, I'm, I'm plotting, you know, it's like, okay, here's the carrot, here's the thought, threat. here, quick, get some some uh, 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 real world uh, information, background mm -hmm. on why is this a threat? I mean, doesn't, it's like, oh, okay, well, that's why it's a threat. All right, so mm -hmm. we baked it in there. I forget things, you know, little things like their clothes. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they're all naked when they're when they're running around on, on the story pages. So um, I, I, that's got to be smithed out. Um, so, right. Okay. So, uh, how do you how do you go about create creating a character? Uh, like, let's take your enigma trace. So, who's the protagonist in your story? So, part of the reason we went to a new series um, called Bears is because the the characters that were in the Enigma series had grown up in that series. And so they they had grown up, they'd had relationships, and they actually had children. So it's still the same family-owned group or family-controlled group. And this is the next generation of characters. And okay. so there are there are two primary or eldest within that that next generation which is gracie and her twin brother uh juan jr who goes by jj in the okay. stories and so those are our main protagonists in the stories and they they are the ones who battle the threat okay and, and what is their specialty or skill sets they're they're technologists first they also mm -hmm. have multilingual capabilities um, Gracie's probably more financial than her brother is. He, he really likes to do the programming and all of that. But in growing up in the family, um, homeschooling was primarily what goes on. And okay. we explain that that's so that they have very certain skills to be able to participate in the family business and things okay. like language skills and, and, uh, technology skills defense skills, all of those things are, are part of that homeschooling lesson because the, the, our group, the primary group is, is not really an advertised company. Uh, okay. They work for special governments. They work for certain kinds of people. And it's more of a word of mouth to be able to get their support on any given thing. Or as the Enigma airs, um, it starts out as I'm going to do a, a favor for a friend and it's okay. a friend that I went to school with. And that favor kind of becomes this unbelievable threat to all of them actually. Okay. And I don't know if how much you want to give away of the story, but uh, what, what is the basis of the, of, of the story? Like what technological threat are we dealing with this? Am I going to guess so, would it be something like AI or? <laughs> no, no, it, it, no, it's more of a, uh, 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 what we call this, uh, this uh, uh, antagonist uh, is a uh, ecological gangster. Okay. He has um, elbowed his way up to the top of the food chain, mm -hmm. quite uh, almost literally, uh, for taking out the trash. Okay. And he uh, basically have landed this uh, giant contract with New Jersey and New York to be able to haul out their plastics, figuring that uh, he could take everything and sell it to the Chinese. The Chinese, of course, as yet in real life, uh, actually uh, put a uh, blockade up and said, no, we're not taking any more trash from uh, from the U.S. because we'll use all of our, uh, our, our plastics local and we'll recycle all that and uh, have a nice day, guys. Right. So here's a guy who's uh, he's so proud and uh, a little on the shady side. OK, a lot mm -hmm. shady side. Um, what do you do with uh, all the stuff that uh, you're you've promised to take out and dispose of correctly? Uh, and um, you really can't do do it properly. And so you find unethical ways to be able to eliminate it. And so this is 
puts him at the direct odds with the uh, an environmentalist group that says we need to get the the information on this guy. Help us bring him down. Okay, very cool. And is this uh, like I don't I don't know how you structured your previous series. Is is each book uh, standalone or is like they're a, 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 the same um, antagonist throughout the series? And is that what you're planning to do here? Or is there going to be a different antagonist with uh, every book? Or it it'll be very similar. Each book is design it to be a standalone because okay. you never know when somebody's going to pick up a book. So there's enough sure. information that kind of, they don't feel like they're jumping in the lake and there's no boat anywhere around. Mm -hmm. um, but the, like in the, in the original series, people grow, they, they change. They're not, mm -hmm. it's not a cookie cutter for us. We decided originally we never wanted to do a cookie cutter where everybody stays at the same point in time. <laughs> from an right. age perspective and all of that. And all you do is throw new mysteries at them or new, new things they have. So, okay. uh, and, and this will have the same, this one's going to be a trilogy too. Oh, okay. Book two and this one is actually coming out relatively soon uh, in this, but we decided we were going to do this as a trilogy just for fun. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you know, just to kind of camp onto that though, Lou, um, we, they're none of them are the same. I mean, yes, yes, there's an attack vector from the dark, the, the bad guys, mm -hmm. uh, but they're um, we really pushed ourselves to make sure that it doesn't become a formula. Okay, you know, uh, okay. you know, it, it's it's time for you know on page twenty five for you know this this event to happen. Yeah, there it is. Okay, uh, we talked to some uh, readers that said, man, um, and I won't mention the the writer, but. Um, he said, I, I've read all of the uh, this uh, this writer's books, and they're all the same. They all mm -hmm. sound the same. They all have the same attack vector. It's all it it it. How tedious is that? I was looking for something <laughs> fresh. So, um, it yeah, it's a little harder to do. Uh, you know, sure. give me a fresh uh, attack. Give me uh, some new uh, wrinkles on the uh, the good guys that uh, uh, nobody caught early on. And now they're struggling to be able to uh, uh, deal with that inner turmoil as they're working through the, uh, the problems. So okay. those are, quite frankly, a lot more satisfying uh, for, sure. the, for the reader and, and for uh, for us. Right, right. And uh, do you term these books as techno thrillers or? Yes. That's actually a term that we uh, uh, rocks uh, helped uh, coin early on. Okay. We kept trying to get, we want to put our books in, and then they said, "Well, uh, thriller mystery. Where's the technical mm. stuff?" And and we started petitioning that, and then before long, it became a genre uh, that uh, you know we uh, we feel rather comfortable in for uh, sure. uh, from our backgrounds and from uh, from the story threads. Okay. Yeah, when we started writing the books, Lou. You know, it it was a thriller, or it was a science fiction technology, and so we actually did sit around and and coin the word techno thriller, and I put out some, you know, copyrights on it and that kind of stuff. So that, but it now has picked up and be, it's grown its own legs now, and mm -hmm. uh, people are having fun with it. And it, it, it yeah, that's what we want it to be because it right. is technology facts along right. with a thriller story. Yeah, and it, that's how you come up with the ideas for your stories. You sort of just scan uh, current events or things like that, or well, it, it's like a conveyor belt of uh, of uh, technical threads coming from the uh, technical world. We watch all the the stuff that's uh, being baked, cooked, um, even the uh, artificial intelligence stuff. We we actually had uh, we've got two stories on the uh, uh, in, in our in our first series uh, mm. that's focused on the AI wars. And that was done okay. two years ago, you know, before, wow. you know, uh, chat GPT, you know, went, uh, right. you know, went live with stuff. So, you know, we see stuff before it gets to be mainstream and, mm -hmm. uh, some of it is like, it's like really exciting and some of it is really terrifying. Yeah, for sure. So I have to ask that you're both technically inclined. Do you use, uh, uh chat DP or anything like that to, for your books? No, we don't. No. We want it. We want to be able to write from ourselves. Okay. Um, so we, we actually put disclaimers on some of the little blog articles and things saying that this was written by a human as opposed to being being written by AI. But we're, mm -hmm. we've been in technology from a from a professional career perspective for, you know, over 20 years. 
Mm-hmm. So we've been, we've seen technology grow and change and, and uh, yeah, it, it, you know, some of it's, some of it's great. I think, mm-hmm. I think that AI has a place. I just don't think it's found its place yet. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think one of the biggest challenges facing us uh, right now is our social um uh, of capabilities have not uh, kept up with the while well, the technology is so f- pacing so fast that uh, it takes time for us to uh, you know incorporate this stuff into our our daily lives in a proper manner and i think like we're seeing that a lot of the fallout right now like with social media how it's been uh, you know they're pretty disruptive uh, in, in many ways instead of helpful because we just have, haven't come up with the right social structure to to, to make it a a positive uh experience for everybody um yeah because uh, unfortunately everybody gets a pulpit now when <laughs> they all want to <laughs> they want to all tear garments and, and, and rave um, unfortunately yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay so this is gonna be a trilogy and uh that's gonna be interesting for you i think uh, because the other series was so long um i, I do you have an uh, do you have the end point already in mind for the for the trilogy or because you have already got the second book coming out so i guess you must have the 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 end point so we've started the third book mm-hmm. because we we wanted to tuck a little chapter of book 3 behind book number 2 when it's published right how we get to the end where we think we want to go in the third book hasn't really flushed out yet okay <laughs> it's a work which in is, progress well which which is exciting right <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the uh, the characters and the story dictate to us. This is where we need to go with it. And so um, mm-hmm. we have really uh, started that exercise, the, the sprint, as, as okay. it were, um, in that arena. But uh, we have some, uh, some some good ideas for the uh, the beginning of the book, and uh, I'm kind of pleased with the way it's, it launches because uh, oh. it's uh, lots of stuff going on and uh, lots of excitement, and uh, those are those are key ingredients for storytelling. Um, right. and then you get into the okay, some of the stuff behind the scenes, and then you know you break it into the uh, basically what would become a, um, a screenplay. Cool. And that's a lot of what we, we try to sculpt. Okay. Um, do the any of the characters from your previous uh, series do they have any like uh, cameos in in the new series or yeah like I guess the they, parents? Or... They do. We have a very special character that has been in the books forever. Okay. And that is Ichabod. And oh. Ichabod has grown up in the entire series and continues to grow and evolve. And Ichabod. Um, Ichabod is always going to be present in, in any of the Enigma series or Enigma airs. Okay. He's cool. a uh, uh, AI enhanced supercomputer that oh, okay. uh, early on um, wanted to know how, how do you do humor? <laughs> and so we had we have a fun exercise with that because that that's cool. uh, that's very much a human humanistic uh, characteristic, and uh, uh, his ethics uh, are always uh, under dress um, and he's always wanted to know more which is what mm. you know what we see in the uh, ai world right you, you can uh, go ahead and um the the protagonist the brother and sister do they get along or is there tension between them it's like are they trying to um was one trying to outdo the other or that kind of stuff or well i mean well, what what pair of siblings don't tease each other, taunt, <laughs> get irritated, right. and love each other to death. Right. So, yeah, I mean, uh, these are realistic characters. You know, we've uh, both uh, Rox and I have got other siblings that uh, um, mm. have aggravated us, uh, you know, annoyed us, and, uh, and right. but we're the only ones that uh, you get to uh, 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 call them names. So there it is. <laughs> Very good. All right, and uh, so your your current book uh, is out now, um, Enigma Tracer, and I'm assume it's available at all the usual uh, suspected places: Amazon, Barnes and Noble, your own website. And it's also available in an audiobook format. Oh, cool! So you've done done it by our wonderful voice of our series, Derek Scholes. Okay, just he does an amazing rendition of our stories. Excellent. Yeah, and if you don't think you do the so, other you just, uh, look, look at all the uh, the the, uh, the awards he's won for, right. for the books that he's done for us. Okay, cool. Has he done the other series too? Or... Oh yeah, 
Oh, yeah. So all, all your books are in audio book format? That's correct. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, maybe you don't want to answer this question, because, but I'm curious because I, uh, my understanding is for a, a certain portion of uh, writers, they actually have more sales of their audio books than they do their printed books. Are you, is that true for you or? Is it... No, we actually get more printed books sold. Do you? Okay. Um, and it, and it's mostly because we do a lot of um, in-person events. Oh, okay. And so, it, you know, it, it's not like you can carry an audio book around with you. Right. So, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we do point but... them to their website where, the, uh, where you can get the, the links and uh, download the audio books. Um, All right. I will warn you that uh, we've had a couple of people call or uh, email us complaining uh -oh. uh, that the uh, the books were like, you know, so so absorbing that they couldn't do anything over the weekend. The kids didn't <laughs> get the trash didn't get taken out. I mean, nothing until they get finished listening to the book. So oh, um, that, we're that quite must proud be very of gratifying. The, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very yeah, very gratifying. Very cool. And um, what was the other question I was going to ask you about that? Uh, Darn, I lost it now. Uh, so uh, you, your second book is, uh, what's the title of that one? Enigma Forest. Enigma Forest, yeah. Forest. okay. <laughs> All right, and that's coming out when? Should be in the Probably next within the next 30 to 45 days. It's in editing right now, and, and okay. uh, editing is, it's a really you know, in general, it's a really tedious process, but it's it's coming along well. Right. Yeah. Now, the hard the hard copy and digital uh, one will be out as Fox indicated in 30, 45 days. The Audible will probably be sometime in May before we get the, that one uh, 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 pulled together. Uh, our uh, our voice actor is uh, so busy we have to get on his schedule to uh, right. uh, get him uh, getting teed up to uh, to be able to do the uh, do our book. Okay. Uh, typically, how many uh, how many books do you release in a, a year? Is that one a year or two or? We we do two. Two. two? Yeah. Okay. So you have like one in the editing stage and one in the the writing stage. Is that how it kind of works for you, or are they so totally we write, separate? We write in a totally another genre as well. So we are oh. also part of a part of a group that um, called the Underground Authors. Okay. And um, that has over a dozen authors in it. And oh. each of us release a book a year. So we mm. all tag a month in a year that we want to release a book. It's the Magnolia Bluff Crime Chronicles. And so our target for that particular one is coming up in the summer, late summer. Okay. And and you write as a team in that series too? or We do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So I don't want to put a wedge between you. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah. Have you either uh, you toyed with the idea of writing something uh, on your own? Um, it's not uncommon for us to uh, come up with something and then toss it over the fence because um, uh, I need her input uh, for for something okay. that, uh, that that I've cooked because uh, it's uh, uh, we just uh, that's just why that's how I like to write. You know, I okay. like to write with her. She's my friend and uh, co-author, so. Um, there's not really any motivation to uh, for, for me to write on my own, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> then we know? write to Springfield and Berkey. I mean, that's how we're listed on our books and on our, our website is Breakfield right. and Berkey. Which sounds um, like a dance team or something. <laughs> that's it. Breakfield and Berkey. But, um, you know, we do often start something on our own and then, as Charles says, you know, launch it over. He's a fan, for example, of science fiction. Mm -hmm. He absolutely adores, you know, Dune, I think was one of his right. like, yeah. besties. And um, so he wanted to, to have us go down the path of, of doing a science fiction short story, okay. which we, we certainly accomplished. But we do bat things back and forth. So it, it does two things. We get a better voice overall, we think. Mm -hmm. um, and we also um, get that smoothing that we're able to do, even though we have editors that come behind us and everything else, just mm -hmm. it's, it just works for us. It works. Right. What about uh, personal appearances and, and that do you, do you have, do you do them together all the time or do you, uh, are you comfortable doing it on your own or? It's more fun to do it together, but right. the, uh, um, a lot of, uh, uh, to, uh, to your point, uh, rocks, a lot of times we'll send her out two or three times a year 
up mm-hmm. to Barnes and Noble in Colorado, um, mm-hmm. and, and they just uh, they move from uh, from store to store, mm-hmm. and they move their uh, the inventory they order in for, uh, fr- uh, from uh, uh, Ingrams, and then uh, uh, it gets uh, she gets the personal appearance, and uh, uh, yeah, they're they're uh, uh, they're fun exercises because it gets a chance to get in front of customers and readers mm-hmm. and say what do you like what do you, you know here's what I'm doing you know does this uh, fit and we get some uh, some uh, face-to-face feedback right. those, those are the most fun uh, mm-hmm. for for having both of us there but not it's not always practical to have us both there right and are you both comfortable with public speaking yes well, uh, I, I'm yeah. very comfortable I, I love public speaking okay. I do it in yeah. my job now, I work I, with customers yeah yeah mm-hmm. for me I, I, it's, it's more like heckling uh, so uh, you know, I, I, uh, if I can do a little bit of uh, you know uh, impromptu and uh, and uh, my irrelevance, then uh, right. um, I, I I can talk. You know, uh, I can speak as well. Okay, very cool. Well, I think that's uh, everything that I had. Uh, I'll just give you both an opportunity to bring up uh, anything else that hasn't come up during the course of the interview. Uh, uh, Charles, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I would encourage you, uh, people to uh, stop by our website, uh, look at the uh, uh, the specials that we have uh, in place um, at uh, enigmaseries.com. Okay. Uh, our audibles, our ebook links, uh, hardcover signed. You know, uh, for uh, anybody that wants to be in, uh, in the U.S., we'll, we'll be able to uh, you know ship to them. Um, and we've got a new project coming out that uh, Rox is going to be very proud of. Um, uh, for uh, trusted friends and lovers, we'll have that uh, uh, available probably before the end of the month for uh, okay. for review. And so it gets us a little bit into the uh, uh, women's contemporary and romance area, which was um, mm. kind of a fun excursion. You know, uh, I'm sure. not a women's, but uh, you know, I, I you know I, I like the I like the uh, the concept. So uh, it was fun fun to cool. uh, contribute. Okay. Anything to add, Rox? The only other thing I want to add, Lou, and it's because you have such a wonderful audience and you have been so generous and kind to us. If any of your listeners, or or I would say the first 10 listeners who send an email to authors at enigmaseries.com, if mm-hmm. they want an audio book of Enigma Tracer, or they want to get the, the early ones for an, um, Enigma Forced, Mm-hmm. Happy to do that. Happy to. Share. We'll send you a complimentary copy if you'd like, Lou. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. And that's it. Right. I mean, it, we love talking. We do love getting with <laughs> podcasts and and talking to different. Right. And, well, I certainly enjoyed talking to the both of you, and I wish you all the best with this book and the next one and whatever projects you have in the future. Thank you, Lou. And when you Appreciate have more, it. come back on and we'll talk about them. <laughs> Deal. All right. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye.